considerations, amending changes, additions, or removals to the agenda. Should I have one? Um, need to add to that. The next line. Approve the uh, minutes for July 25th as well. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I entertain a motion of adding uh, drugs and alcohol testing to other business. So I entertain. And then I think you want to um, the delete. Delete number 14. Okay, wait a minute. I'll make the motion to add the minutes for July 25th. Was that the yep. date I heard? Um, and to add number 17 to the agenda, uh, drug and alcohol testing, and delete number 14 on the uh, agenda. Do we need to do this? We're going to keep no. that. Okay, yeah, we'll keep that one. Okay. Change of Williams. So that's my motion. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any other proposed changes to the agenda? Okay. Um Absent objection, uh, we will delete number 14. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. So let's move on to approving the minutes from 8 1 2024. And 725. And 725. Um, move to uh, approve the minutes as presented for July 25th and August 1st. I'll second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. All right, moving on. Comments from ratepayers. That'd be me. So, um, Kathy Grant from Orion. Um, first of all, I do owe you an email, so I apologize for not getting that to you yet. The other question is, um, in the agenda, I can't tell, are we gonna, are you gonna talk about the stone house or whatever the solar array is? Today, I don't know if that's part of yep. where that co comes in. Okay, yeah. that's all I have. Thanks. Okay, moving on. Manager's report. Okay. <clears throat> we we'll start with update on the GIS system. The employees on the outside have been training on a new system. They've been doing very well. They're starting to get familiar with how to enter data and move around on the system. Um, our accountant, Michael Gadway, has been doing an excellent job in learning the system and has been updating it with our transformer data. Hats off to Michael. He's a number guy, but he's done, in fact, a fantastic job with the GIS system. Good job, Michael. Um, union update. We've had a couple of meetings with the union bargaining team and the department's new team consisting of Sarah Buxton, Jean Strong from representing the late commissioner's department, and Brett Sanderson, the superintendent, the accountant Michael, and myself. We're making progress to our, towards the final contract. We hope to get the final contract in two more sessions. No promises. Update on the Stonehouse Solar Project. The purchase power agreement was presented to the department at last meeting, and the department's legal team wanted to review it in more detail. Um, hopefully we can get that finalized in today's meeting. Financials, just a quick update on July. Looks like it might show a small loss for the month, and our year-to-date loss will be around 590K. 
509K? Yeah. Sorry. And hopefully a uh, good C season will help turn that around a little bit. Update on FEMA. We still have two projects that have not been finalized. The relocation of the line on the Black River and the mill transformer project. The relocation of the line on the Black River should be finalized and submitted next week. Um, the mill transformer is down the road a ways, probably still yet. Um, any questions on any of that? Um, what's going on with the mill project? Um, we've started with redoing the transformer that's in the ball down low. Mm -hmm. They didn't like that. They wanted that moved up. So we looked at the pole and decided to put transformers up there, but the cost of that is way in excess of what we thought. So FEMA's looking at it and wants us to look at it with different aspects. So not knowing where that's going to go at this point. So we do have a transformer. We did purchase the transformer that we now can't use? No. We have not purchased the transformer. Oh, it got ordered, but we can't use it. Yeah. We ordered it, but we can't use it. Right. But we're not going to be charged for that? We're going to be charged for the drawings. How, how much is that? A 20, what are they looking for, Brad? 24, 23, something 23, like that. 23, 25% of the And that's something that we'll probably negotiate with, uh, we'll see how we can do with that. Because we'll we did order it. They wanted a PO before they would do the drawings. So we gave them the purchase order, and we said, we need to see the drawings to get the dimensions and the weight. Where we needed the dimensions and weight, they said, we can't do that without the drawings. So we gave them, then we got the drawings and figured out that's not going to work. So there's some back and forth on there. Yeah. So I did just so I understand, so I heard you correctly. We needed the drawings. Well, and actually, we're we pay needed for the drawings. We needed the dimensions and the weight. Right. To see if it would fit into the space we had, they wouldn't give us the dimensions and weight until they did the drawings. Okay. They wanted a purchase order to do that. So we created a purchase order. They consider that an order. They did the drawings. We figured from the drawings now, that's not going to work. And we never approved the drawings. So it's going to be a legal battle for us with that, that piece. Oh, what, what exactly does that mean? A we're legal gonna, battle? We're going to try to get out of having to pay that $23,000 for the drawings. We couldn't make a decision without the drawings. We didn't know that there was a fee for the drawings, 23000 Did we ask? I'm just trying to understand the process, because... The process was that FEMA, we had to figure out if we could fit that in there. I understand. So yeah, we, the process we, of the purchase order is what I mean. They insisted on a purchase order before they would do the drawings. Okay. And they couldn't do the weight, the dimensions without the drawings. So, so we signed a purchase order for the entire amount, correct? Yes. For almost 100000 Correct. Contingent on approval of the drawings. Do, and does it say that on the purchase order? I don't know. There are some, yeah, I have documentation that says they're waiting, after the drawings they were waiting for approval Okay. before starting the I construction. Thought, oh, Whoever, somebody else is going to ask you for this, but I'd like to see it or have the board see um, what you just said. Yep, about, I have it in the Because I would think that that would eliminate a battle if that was part of your purchase order process, that you wouldn't have to have a battle if you could say, here, you know, it doesn't fit, we don't need it, um, we don't owe you anything. Right. I have the email string stating all that. So okay, so can, you, that can you share those so that yeah. that might eliminate a battle? Mm -hmm. It might, and that's where we were going to try and find it. I would say yes. it should if you have all the documentation saying that, you know, this purchase order is only good if we can use it. Yeah. And, and I don't know that you would do this, but don't. This is me talking. 
don't pay that $24,000 <laughs> without consulting the board, okay? Is that, don't worry yeah. about that. Do you that, need no. a motion or no? It won't happen? No. No. We okay. Won't, yeah. No, All we're, right. We're going to fight that one. And that can be of help, too, looking at the contract and seeing if yeah. there's a way we can Good. get out of it. Yeah. Would, um, was there board approval for the, the purchasing of this? Uh, we, I don't believe there I don't think so, no. We didn't know if the thing was even going to work. I feel at that point, yeah, I feel like we should, um, something that high of a cost should have probably come to the board prior to. This is back in April? Uh, started back last fall, no. Yeah, I started it in November or December of last year. We started looking at this. It's a submersible transformer so that it could withstand the floodings. The purchase order was issued in April? April 30th, I, it looks like. Yeah. <coughs> I, that was what it was signed off on. Yep, I, have the, I can print out the purchase order, send that out to you. Yeah. I don't know when it was signed. And I don't originally, have that date in front originally of this was 100% going to be paid for by FEMA. According yeah. to FEMA. Nothing's yeah. 100%. Yeah. FEMA, yeah. ask Brendan. Got, got anything <laughs> to add, Brendan? <laughs> There's a broken desk in my office. That was <laughs> you know about my relationship with FEMA. <laughs> they promise the world. Don't, don't, like I said, don't pay anything. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's. Um. Any other questions on that? Uh, we'll now hear from the superintendent's report. Um, so street light maintenance, there was none. Um, we're starting meter reading for the month tomorrow morning. Uh, substation main maintenance monthly checks. Um, we've got to get scheduled to install regulators at Howard Barton Jr. Sub and install, it, install a reclosure in Smithville. Um, in the process of getting some prices on concrete for foundations for those two projects. Um, 21 dig safe locates, um, line maintenance, um, installed service pole plumb we have for a new service. Uh, monthly outages, we had an outage Ellison Lake Road, outage Fox Lane, uh, Route 100 South, Down Tree, um, didn't lose service, just took the line down. And then we storm work for GMP on the 9th and 10th of the month. Um, services, service upgrade 77 Maple Street in Proc, new service Route 100 South, new service 217 Ellison Lake Road, line trimming tree removal, line trimming on Okimo Access Road, North Village Road, and Raymond Road, um, vehicle maintenance, um, the two 150s L39 and L40, one still in Claremont, one came back today just on a couple recalls. Um, getting fixed. Uh, safety meeting topic was trouble investigations, shop and office maintenance, lawn mowing and weed killing, and then the miscellaneous was a mill transformer, which you've already discussed. So, when you're um, just in terms of the GIS system, are you using that for any of this, like? Maintenance, just routine maintenance? We haven't started yet. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we're going to try to get into the process of it. I mean, yeah. We're still still working, trying just to get everything updated. And yeah. I, I am, in my day job, I work a lot with the, um, the Springfield Highway Department. And they use a GIS system that allows them to, you know, submit work orders and things and guys, you know, other guys on the crew just get notification on their phone when, you know, the uh, foreman sees something, take a picture, they get a whole thing. Is that all part of the, the system that we're using? It will be, yes. Eventually? Yeah. There, there, there's a scheduling part of it. They can keep, the superintendent can go out and schedule the crew. Yep. It'll pop up on their phones and say, you're scheduled to do this, do this, do this work order. And that'll all be in there. And it also has the ability to do... Uh, Daily reports yeah. on what the, everybody's doing all within that one app. Yeah, yeah. Just it's really uh, um, 
as I've learned more and more about these systems and I use them in my own work a lot, I really uh, am fascinated by how much function they have. And I'm curious to see that roll out. Okay. Computer yeah. literate here. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of these guys are not, but right. they're, you know, they have cell phones, and if you can get yeah. it to work on your, you can figure out your own cell phone. Yeah. Sometimes that's that's enough. Yeah. And anytime you're available, come down and I'll. Yeah, I, I really so need, I need to. I'll work it out. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, the aspect that I, I was really interested in is just the ability for. I don't know. I mean, it sounds silly almost, but thinking about the the tree maintenance, right, and tree cutting. The ability for Brett, you know, you to just be able to drive around and take a picture, and, you know, it pins the location, and then you can set that as a work order for whoever, and then somebody can see this list of, you know, like we need to get out and do these spots. I think for us that'll be interesting as we start to see going into the winter, you know, how much tree maintenance should we do before the winter? How much do we have left? Where are we at on things? You know, to be able to track some of that a little better is. Mm -hmm would be really interesting. So when you talk about the training that the employees, the outside folks are getting now, how, how's that being done? Are you scheduling that, that Brett? Or? Um, that's scheduled automatically. Okay. We pick the classes once a year, the topics that we have to have, plus a few others, and it's scheduled for every first Monday of every month. Okay, perfect. First Monday or first? Friday. I mean, sorry, first Friday. You're right. It's first Friday. There we go. Okay. Okay. At our last meeting, uh, Vespa alternate alternate board member. At our last meeting, we indicated that we would be accepting the letter of in interest to be appointed as the alternate director position assigned to Ludlow Electric Light Department on the VESPA board, that's our board. Um, I'd like to suggest that we table this appointment for the time being, because um, I anticipate that uh, the governance structure of Ludlow Electric Light Department will be uh, changing in the near future, and would like to align new appointments with the, that structure. Um, this would mean that Tom will remain as our representative director at BEPSA, and now, for now, and the, <laughs> that our allocated um, alternate director post will remain vacant. What do other board members think of this? I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So we'll not <coughs> take any further action on this item at this time. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, discussions of tariff rates, and that's something I'm going to refer to you on. Uh, both of us, Michael and myself. Okay. Um, there's multiple of them that we need to go through and adjust. Um, I think we probably need to make a list of them and try oh, to yeah. figure I, some costs. Well, it's what you have to do for a rate, it's called the rate redesign at the Public Utility Commission. Right. If you want to adjust your tariffs and change the way they're structured, you have to have all your billing determinants for each tariff, how much revenue you got from that particular piece of the tariff with each individual piece. You redesign your tariff so you don't make any more money. It's a revenue neutral redesign. Up one, down to the other. Right. So if I'm increasing my KWH on one part of a, a single tariff, someplace else I got to lower my, so that my actual revenue stays neutral. Okay. And so you have to have all the billing determinants that are associated with each piece of each tariff. Okay. And there are... Oh, to satisfy the PUC's regulations. That's, they, that's why they call it a rate redesign, which is revenue d neutral, versus a rate case, which is increasing your revenue. So they have two different, yeah. And it, it, I mean, we can do it, and it's something I'd love to do because I agree, these, these tariffs are 14, 15 years old. They really need to be redesigned. But doing that and then going through a rate case, you can't do both of them at the same time. Okay. So I have invited my colleague, Ron Shems, to join us, and he is our utility lawyer, one of the best in the state. <laughs> uh, Ron, can you hear us? 
Yep, I can. Okay, so I think you might have just heard Michael, and you and I were kind of going through the tariff process this morning. I don't know if there was anything you wanted to add that the commission commissioners should be thinking about in terms of getting ready to take any of these actions, or um, if, yeah, if there's anything you wanted to add to to this. You know, the PUC generally likes to see a rate design every a new rate design every five years. Um, it's kind of an impossible task. Um, <laughs> I went through one with the Washington Electric Co-op about five years ago, and we're supposed to be proposing a new one now, um, but we haven't even started. But, but <clears throat> you know, typically you start off with a board approving of exploring a new rate design and commissioning a, a cost of service study, uh, which is, I think, what Mike was just describing. And um, the types of rate design that the commission likes to see these days is where you don't, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, you were trying to disincentivize using a lot of electricity. You're trying to be very efficient. Now, <clears throat> the commission's trying to incentivize beneficial electrification. You know, people using electric cars, people using uh, efficient electric hot water heaters, and so the rate design would have to reflect these uh, these new state policies. And um, so <clears throat> that's at a thirty thousand foot level. But you know, I would figure out the policy objectives you want to you want to meet. We and then you can you know, commission a cost of service study to, to see how, how to best do that. And then the other thing, uh, we always work very closely with VEPSA doing our cost of service studies. Yeah. So they will do yeah, that for us for free. That's what VEPSA mm -hmm. is there to, to do, this, this type of work for you, crunching those numbers. All right. What is our, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just wondering, what is our ability in terms of the idea of uh, incentivizing electrification to some amount, it would seem to me that you would need to have some extra equipment or something else on the meter to know what power was going to those electrified. Well, let me give you an example. Residential demand rates. We have residential rates versus residential demand rates. And the way our tariff is written for residential demand if you hit more than 9 kW in two consecutive months or 2,000 kWh in two consecutive months, you get moved on to the residential demand rate for 11 months. If you stay below that 9 and the 2,000 for 11 months, you get moved back to the residential rate. Does that sound confusing? It totally is. Yeah, I wonder, I mean, I wonder how often... Well. People actually tra change between those two. I am on the. You're on the residential demand for your demand. service point. Yeah. yeah. I guess I, I was just wondering about specific. I mean, if we're talking about electric cars, like right now, I don't have an electric car anymore. I did for a little while. Um, it was nice. I liked it. It was fun. But I, I ran my charger right off of my. It was connected directly to my normal box. And so you would have had no way to know what power I was using to charge the car. And he was mentioning just that we, if we were going to consider a change to the tariff rates, that one thing the PUC might like to see is us charging, you know, an incentivized price for that type of device. And there I was just wondering what, what would be required from us to implement something like that. Well, our AMI system will accommodate some of that. Right. And technically, you could put a separate meter on your car charger to get the time of use on that. Yeah. yeah. And the PUC is strongly pointing towards having a separate tariff just for electric vehicle charging to, to help yeah, incentivize that. To, yeah. I, I think the PUC required all utilities to either file for an extension or to propose an EV tariff uh, last March. Yeah, and I think FEPSA filed for all of its members a, an extension. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something that we will have to be thinking about. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It'll be with the, the rest of them. So. so another item that the PUC is pretty uh, that that's important to the PUC is a, a low income rate. 
um, which is something that's difficult for a small utility to figure out on your own. That's something that should be done on a statewide basis. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, that it, that is just FYI. That's something that that the commission raises uh, a fair amount. Logistically a nightmare. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. We so, get to charge everybody a dollar on their bill. That goes into a separate fund. Then other people who are low income would apply through a, a third party, and then they could get a credit on their bill against that fund that we charged everybody else for. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, the everyone with an electric car would have to get another meter. That's that's yeah. one option. Yeah. Um, there's another option that, you know, whoever your car charging people are, they sometimes have a different program through a satellite that can tell how much you're using to charge your car. So yeah. it can get back to us that way. And the then usage. they would send yeah. us that information, yeah. Yeah, it depends on Various different ways. Yeah, and that meter is on um, the account holder. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking, do you, well, want, to need, do you want to take a next step? Are you ready to? Well, you're going to start a rate case, right? We're going to start another rate I'm case. I'm planning on doing a rate, Dom and I have discussed that we're going to think about doing, starting in April of next year, filing for another rate case, full, a full-blown rate case, and going in for like 4 or 5% increase. It'll be based on this year's? It'll be based on 2024's data. Okay. And uh, I can see what we can do about, let me talk with uh, Steve Farman up at VEPSA and see if he, w what he thinks about doing a rate redesign first. Because like I say, the rate redesign has to be revenue neutral. Yeah. So if we're going for a rate case, we're changing the revenue, and getting the rate redesign to tie to that will be. I'm forgetting, I know we talked about this maybe a month ago now, but uh, what was the, what were the factors on the, the, you know, partial failure of our rate case, the last rate case? Our lack of debt. All right, and so uh, just, I mean, is that situation different? Uh, no, we haven't, we've got a little bit more debt now, but not much more. But we do have a loss. Yeah, Which I guess I'm, I'm wondering if we should you know, lean into the, the rate redesign, the tariff redesign, as opposed to the rate case, knowing that the rate case, if our financial situation hasn't changed substantially, we may no. not succeed again. We'll obviously know better at the end of the year the financial situation, yeah. but I think it is substantially changed. Oh, it is. From when we, when we, we, fi we filed applied. based on 2022, when we were showing a hundred and eighty thousand dollar loss in 2022. This year, we're planning on being somewhere around four to five hundred thousand dollar loss by the year end. All depends on the snowmaking season. All right. So what? But what is our our cash account balance? Cash, including uh, CDs, is right around four million. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just. I mean, weighing those two, it feels like we're not going to yeah. be showing enough of a loss. We're still going to be hanging on to a balance. We we got to use we got to get some more debt and yeah. other other little projects that are coming on. We could get some more debt. Ron and wants to speak. Yeah. Ron. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, if I can make a suggestion, you know, not having particular familiarity with your finances or anything like that, so you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Um, the it take a rate design so it takes a lot of work to, to get to the point where you're filing a rate design. There has to you have to figure out your policy objectives. You have to do the cost of service study. You have to do a fair amount of public outreach uh, to make sure that you know your members are all you know supported uh, or that the residents support it. Um, while a, a, a rate increase or a, a new rate case that that doesn't take a lot of time, and, and you can so you might want to consider just because for for timing and preparation purposes, just getting the rate case out of the way. And you know, in parallel, you can start the prep work. Well, unfortunately, Ron, we filed for a, a 2% rate increase effective June 1st. So we have to wait at least a year. Oh, okay. Well, would it be, 
would it be another two or three percent that you're filing for or greater? It w I think it would be greater if we did a full blown rate case. The one we just filed in uh, March of this year was one of those standard 2% increases that they're just a short rate case. I, I don't think you can do two short ones within the, within a year, but I think you can. No. You, know, you can do another rate case, I think, maybe. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought we still had to wait another year. I'll need to double check, but I know you can't do two short ones within a year. Okay, I, I was under the assumption that all of them had to wait at least one year time I think frame. you okay. do. Yeah, you, you may be right. I need, uh, I need to double check that. Ron, just to, this is Tom. Just a question. I don't know if you've run into this. Um, in these rate cases, are you finding that the commission is looking at the uh, IRPs at all? You know, yeah. You know, in the, yeah. in the capital expansion? Are they considering yeah. that, or this, is that still, they don't want to deal with that? They, they do consider it, and it's, it's kind of a mess because right now they're kind of trying to elevate the importance of an IRP, and it's kind of duplicative of a lot of other stuff. And, you know, where you know, other people I'm talking to are trying to – it's planning documents, so it's helpful to, to see if you're meeting your plan, but it's not a regulatory document that's – you know, you understand what I'm saying? Right, yes. Um, and so it's – It'll be interesting to see how the, how this this round of IRPs plays out. I'm not sure I'm answering your question. But well, I, I don't they think they say it's important. Yet. They say it's important, yeah. but they don't want to recognize it's so important that you need to get a rate increase because of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So do they only <clears throat> base? Do they only base that off of our debt? Or is oh, it also, uh, no, all kinds it's of also things. based off of um, how much money we have? Yes, based off our net income, our financials, mm -hmm. uh, and our billing determinants, how they're being applied, because I have to go through each individual billing determinant, put it all down, and say, okay, we use our residential non-demand customers use this money, KWH, for the year at this rate, uh, the revenue and our revenue on our books ties out to that. Then I have to go to all the demand customers, do the same thing for their demand. So find out all their billing determinants in total and make sure it ties out to the revenue recorded for each of those types of different billing determinants. And then they look at the bottom line, then they look at your revenue and your a little bit at your planned capital purchases. Yeah, not enough though. Not enough, yeah. no. Um, it would seem to me that something to go along with this would be, um, you know, our plan for the future, a capital plan, anything. That's, yeah, that's and what that, I was talking to them about. Okay, they, well, they that's what I, I, I didn't know what those they don't letters seem to were. Be, Sorry. They don't seem to be recognizing it. <laughs> um, call it what it is, and then I'll yeah. know. The IRP is, what does that stand for, Ron? It, integrated Resource Plan. Okay. Um, so it's, it's basically how you're going to provide service for, going forward uh, with, for the least amount possible over the next three years. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I just didn't know what the letters represented. Yes, sorry. But I, I won't forget that. Okay. Um, so that's something that, um, and if, if Ludlow Electric has had it, I haven't been able to find it. Yeah, so it would seem do. to me to be a real priority for us to look at that and yep. Yep. go along with any kind of um, either rate increase or, or whatever we're, our plans are for the future and how to plan to use our savings constructively instead of just every year having a loss and maybe needing to take some of that money from there. Let's, let's plan for it. That's my two cents. Um, <coughs> And with that, um, you said almost four million, including right all of there. our CDs. Uh, is two that, two is of that our stocks? CDs are uh, no, that's not our stock. Two of our CDs are earmarked for a specific purpose and can't be used for regular cash proceeds. The other five can. So it would be good to see that. Yeah, it'd be good to have a full accounting of that. And know yep, well, I have all yeah. that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and the IRP, I mean, I would definitely like to read that. Yeah. I believe that's up on the PUC website. Our IRP yeah, is up the there. On the PUC website. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Actually, maybe some of these things, I know we're going to talk about retreat later on, but some yeah. of these may be appropriate for, that's where for it retreat. That's should be, yeah. That, that's and where. having a deep, like doing a deep dive where it's not conducting business, but just, yeah. so yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like yeah. to have, and we can do this another time or a part of that, but have a real good understanding of what uh, VESPA can do for us or what they are doing, because it's sounding like we have to do it all, no. when in fact, Actually, I, I think they that... Or, um, they orchestrate the whole IRP for right. us. Right. So, so I think it's important to make that clear sure. to the public and to the board that it's not something we're doing all this work in-house. Actually, these folks are getting paid to right. do some of this for us. Yes. Okay. That's it for me. Any action item on the on the tariff stuff? I didn't. I was. I brought Tom, uh, Ron, especially because if they're, we may not be ready to to take action. But if there was an action item, if there was an urgency, he would help with that motion for what the next step would be. But it, it sounds like we're going to focus a little bit more on the rate cases first. Is that what well, I'm hearing? Well, like I said, I can't, I believe we can't do another rate case okay. until June. Uh, so I was planning on filing in April for a June uh, go live date. But if maybe we can do a rate redesign right now on a 12 month period ending uh, June 30th, do a, a July 1 to June 30th 12 month period for our rate redesign information. Shall we research and get back to you with what, what the order of events, your options for the order of events would be uh, and then yep. maybe jointly come up with a recommendation for the commission on what to do next? Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. Yeah, one of the things I would do for the research is exactly what Tom suggested. You know, call Steve Barnum and see what his capacity is. Yep, that's what I, I just wrote down. Call Steve. Okay. Your notes. Uh, moving on to number nine, village and town merger discussions and update. So that's my my item. Um, I just wanted to talk about what's happened since our last meeting. I was invited to join an ad hoc group of um, folks from the town and from the village um, who are exploring the merger for the town and the village. And um, I have agreed to work with the group and help them move forward with the steps that are necessary for um, exploring a charter and a, um, a, plan, a merger plan. So that work is ongoing. Um, but before I formally enter into an agreement with them, my sort of ethical duty is to come to you also as my client and explain that I would be working for the village in this scenario. The department is part of the village. And so in my analysis, there isn't a conflict. And so I don't see any problem because you're all under the same umbrella. And so I've explained to some of the folks in the town that this work also doesn't seem to be in conflict with anything that the town needs but that at any time with the drafts of the charter or the drafts of the documents that they need prepared, I would just flag um, you know, that they may need to have that reviewed by somebody else because my interest is for the department and for the village. Um, so absent any sort of objection to my doing that work in parallel, I, I wanted to flag that and make sure you had an opportunity to to weigh in on that and then I'll pause and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what I've discovered um, about what might be ahead of us for the department um, in terms of the merger but do you have any questions or concerns about my representing the village as part of this I don't I don't okay great um, so since our last meeting um, I've done a little research. Linden and Lindenville have done a merger recently. And I've got a, a conversation on the books with their general manager, their department manager. Um, so he and I are going to talk about any um, 
observations or advice that um, he may have for the department as we look to go through this. Um, I'm actually a little encouraged by the, the draft of the documents that I've seen. Um, for example, it appears as though the way that they approached um, the merger didn't requ necessarily require a stop at the PUC. So I can't confirm that that's, gonna, that's where I've landed with all of my research yet, but it's, it's um, noteworthy that the way that Linden and Linden, Lindenville operated is that they um, wrote in some very specific provisions for the, um, the governance of the, the, their electricity department into the charter, into the merger plan, et cetera. And so because those were all um, sort of outlined for the voters, they were approved by the different governing bodies, you know, the select board in the village, and then ultimately they became law when the legislature voted on them. Um, it was really above board and um, apparently from my cursory review didn't require a PUC stop. And so um, I'm gonna, talk with the lawyer who did all of their legal work to see if our analysis kind of, you know, falls along the same lines. And so I'll be reporting back sort of regularly to the department on things that are specific to anything that the department needs to do or be thinking about um, if this merger were to go forward. And then of course I'll be reporting back to the, the village and the joint um, group that's working on this project on some of the overall timelines and to-do steps. So. Um, I guess the final thing I'll say on that and then ask, because both Logan and Brett were also part of those conversations and so was um, Brendan, um, is that I can confirm <laughs> that the governance of the department is in your charter. And so really the time when the governance, whether it's three commissioners, five commissioners, if it includes representation from other um, municipalities or some of your service area, that's going to be part of what um, would go into the charter and the charter change. And so for now, if there was an interest, as I'd heard, there was expressed at expanding the number to sort of ease some of the pain in <laughs> the open meeting uh, long, uh, <laughs> challenges, uh, that's going to have to stay as it is. Um, but I, I, the group is quite aware that that's something that you would want to have change, and I'll be looking into that. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Any, yep. any other? I mean, I, I would just say, yeah, I do. I am a part of that committee. Um, I, I think I can speak for the committee when I say that uh, we have talked about involving the this board, this committee, in those redesigns, making sure that we get your get our input for that change and what that change, whatever that change looks like, I expect will be um, informed by this committee. And also for, for your thought in terms of your overall strategy, as you, you're kind of, I've heard you reference what's going to happen in the next six months, 12 months, you know, 18 months, three, five years. Um, I had originally thought that this charter process, this approval, the changes, the, the merger, um, may take several years. And I'm not saying that it won't take several years, but what I did find, I'm just going to say this loud enough so Brendan can hear this too, what I did find is that in Linden's timeline, their two governing councils, you know, the, the village and the select board, approved their charter changes in, um, it was either like July or August of a given year, a few years ago. They um, had their required town meetings, their public hearings, within a few months. They had their vote in November. Both the village and the town passed the, the proposed um, merger document. And it went to the legislature in January with a date to be um, a merger date of that coming July. So all within a 12 month period. And the legislature did approve it within that, that session that's always a big question, whether they're gonna to get to it in a given session. But that does mean, and it is something you could and should be thinking of, is depending on how quickly these two communities begin to act and how quickly um, they can come to consensus, that may mean that the governance of, of this department could be different in a, 
you know, not three years from now, but two, one, you know, it, it's a little bit shorter than I guess I had originally thought in my head given other charter changes and mergers that have happened with other communities. So it's at least something to keep on your radar as you contemplate other things that are happening. And that's due to the legislature. I think the slow part will be, well, if you have, if you have no objection in your communities, if there's no community uh, conflict, mm -hmm. um, I think the challenge will likely be whether it can get to the legislature, whether in a new biennium they'll be able to take it up and pass it. And Lo Logan could speak to a little bit more maybe to the chances of that happening. Um, but you don't have some of the barriers, as far as I can tell from our last meeting, that other communities have in that surprisingly to me, and in a good way, you have a lot of your functions that are already done by the same person, so you're not gonna have a lot of personnel change. You have a lot of alignment in your policies and in your um, just the, the delivery of your services. So needing to give yourselves a year of um, time to make those transition may be too much for you. You may not need that. And so taking that off the table, if that really is true, and you do have general consensus in the community, the, the um, likely barrier will be the political process in Montpelier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that I'm, I'm pretty close with some members of the House CovOps Committee, which is where this would start. Um, I feel like I could, could grease things there a little bit and prep it so that it would go easier there. Um, there is a lot of changeover in general in the legislature this year. And so I do, I wonder, you know, when reasonably they would they would be able to take it off the wall. It's just one of those things where it's in the first year after after an election. I feel like committees generally spend like the first month to two months really just doing like orientation type stuff, um, and so then that puts it into at least March or April, and then it's got to go to the other chamber and go through, and the Senate is. In my opinion, you know, as a House member, I would say that I find the Senate more tricky. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, insider politics and all that. I, I think it would be more reasonable to assume that it would happen within a year and a half from now as opposed to, you know, within a year. But okay. it's, po it's not impossible. It's just unlikely, I would say. But does the committee have in mind um, a date to vote, to put it out to the voters? No. Uh, the first action that I, they've assigned me is to come back with the legal required, like a checklist of what needs okay. to get done, and then um, a draft timeline. And then I think the committee is going to begin to think about, if I recall correctly, I think you're going to think about who needs to give input. like which departments in the different town and village structures need to weigh in on the alignment of zoning um, regulations or any ordinance that may need to be aligned, um, who, who gets to weigh in on governance, and then the drafting of the actual merger plan has to happen. So as for dates, maybe you guys have already thought ahead about maybe some pot potential dates, but I know we're not going to meet again with that plan until I think it's I think it's like September eighteenth. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. I think we are shooting, you know, for an actual vote in front of the voters. I think the consensus was March. Town meeting. Good. Yeah. 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 Around there just because it wasn't we wanted to make sure we had all of our ducks in a row and if we're gonna do this we're gonna do it correctly. Yeah, I think that was what we said. I, I, my only input on that was just that if we're not, kind of depends on what we're, we end up shooting for. It sounds like maybe Sarah's, there's a, somewhat less hurdles, so that may be more possible. I, I think I was, in my own mind, I was thinking that we might, um, if we got it done in March, it would probably mean that it wasn't going to pass that legislative session, so there might not be any reason to push it to do it March that year, and then push it out later, like into July or something that year, just knowing it's not going to happen until at least January the following year. Um, if we gain anything by having more public meetings and more input, 
is that was my only thought. I think the only thing, only downfall of that is, is you're going to get more people voting on town meeting than you're going to get yeah. the private yeah. vote. Yeah, those are the, the pros and cons. You kind of weigh with that kind of decision, I think. What is um, currently the difference between the village and the town? What? Because I know that it used to be garbage pickup, and that's no longer a thing. Is is there any other? I mean, water and wastewater is a big part of it. Yeah. You know, realistically. Yeah. Um, but mostly know, so accounting. That's I mean that's the that's the stuff that people don't see. Yeah. I mean the big question that I think that we've kept coming back to, you know. Yeah, it is, and the electric department is a big piece of this, but what that doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, the big people, you know, <coughs> the people that are questioning it are the people that, you know, live out on 100 that are going, hold on a second, I don't have water and sewer, but why, so why do I pay? The quick answer is, you won't, <laughs> you know? So, like, a lot of times, if you're not on water and sewer, you don't pay for it. Right. But those are the type of things, and we've said that, you know, having public meetings that, Really, because there will be questions that come up that none of us here have thought about. You know, right. someone's going to say, "Hey, hold on, I, you know, that's that's the fun of sitting up there in front of people, with somebody blindsiding you with something you never saw coming." You know? Right. So, yeah. Um, so those are the things. But really, the is you look at the, the accounting. You know, you see the efficiency, the redundancy. Um, those are the big ones. Yeah. You know, nothing that a lot of things that people won't. You know, nothing that you can put in somebody's hand, but if you want to come hang out here on a Monday morning, we'll show you exactly what we're going to do. The only thing I can think of is, and March, if you, if you have this on the ballot and you also have the 1% impact um, tax, be, because this is going to slightly impact uh, town taxes, because they're going to have to pick up the small amount of village tax, but it is going to be a small increase. Yeah, so I, mean, the, I don't know. The just village budgets two two hundred thousand dollars. I yeah, I understand. But, you're, but I know exactly what you're saying. You're okay, right that. just just something Those I'm throwing be, out there. You might not want to that's hit them with two tax increases and one vote. That's all. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. That was it. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, um, we'll be entering an executive session to discuss um, a contract. Action may be taken at this conclusion of the session. May I have a motion to find the premature general public knowledge of the discussions of a contract would be clearly, clearly place this public body at a substantial disadvantage. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Now I may have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussion, a contract. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We will now enter executive session for approximately 10 minutes. Joining us will be Tom, Michael, Brett, and legal counsel. If everyone else will please step out and turn off recording devices, we'll notify you when we are ready to enter open session again. At 5.39. All right, we are back in open session. I'll now take a motion for the board to uh, take action related to the power sales agreement. We will have Logan read. Yeah. The board has reviewed the terms of the previously discussed power sales agreement with BEPSA and resolves as follows. Whereas the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department Board of Commissioners, this board, has voted unanimously to enter into a power sales agreement, PSA, with the public, Vermont Public Power Supply Authority, BEPSA, for the for purchase of electric power and energy supply pursuant to a solar power and services agreement, SPSA, with Stonehouse Solar, LLC, 
And whereas VEPSA agrees to enter into said SPSA with Stonehouse Solar LLC to purchase the electrical energy output and any transferable commodity that is directly attributable to the generation of electricity from a grid interconnected ground mounted solar electric PV system to be constructed by Stonehouse Solar LLC on property located within the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department's electrical service territory. And whereas, VEPSA proposes to sell and the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department proposes to purchase all solar services derived from said system. And whereas, operation of said project is scheduled to commence commercial operation by December 31st, 2025. And whereas, the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department Board of Commissioners met in a publicly warned meeting on this 22nd day of August 2024 to authorize this agreement. Now therefore be resolved, the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department Board of Commissioners authorizes the following. One, legal counsel shall finalize the power sales agreement, PSA, for the Stonehouse Solar Project between the board and VEPSA according to the terms outlined above. Two, the chair of the Board of Commissioners and the department manager shall have the, author the power to execute said final agreement within 30 days of this resolution and either shall have the authority to execute any other necessary agreements with either VEPSA or Stonehouse Solar LLC that are consistent with the terms of PSA and SPSA. As of and three authorized by law and according to the terms of the PSA, the Village of Ludlow Electric and Light Department shall fix, revise, and collect fees and charges for electric power and energy derived from said system sufficient to provide revenues adequate to meet its obligations under the PSA, consistent with all regulations of the Public Utility Commission. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. We'll now each sign the resolution. Oh, you want us to sign? Either it? one. Yeah, did I first get your name wrong? I don't have a name. Everybody of course. does. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Everybody either puts an H or an E. There's no H or E. <laughs> Something I do with my weapons. <laughs> Thank you. We don't have to do that right now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. We'll now go into executive session to discuss collective bargaining. No action is anticipated at this conclusion. I'd like to make the proper motion to move into executive session for the topic and the following topic. Uh, to save time, any actions will be taken when we return from all three sessions. For general public knowledge of discussions of labor relations agreements would clearly place the public body at a substantial disadvantage. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. So it's a two-part motion. You'll read the second part. Okay. Um, yep, and then I'll give you another one where you'll read two parts. Okay. Uh, now may I have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing a labor relations agreement? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. We will enter first executive session by approximately 15 minutes. Invited to this discussion are Tom, Michael, Brett, and our legal counsel. And then that's for the receiving attorney information. And then you'll go back to the employment matter one. Okay. 
uh, may I have a motion to find the premature public knowledge of a confidential attorney communications would put this body at a substantial risk. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now may I have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of receiving an attorney communications? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We expect this to take about 10 minutes. And now we're on to the, the employment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We will now pass the motion to move into the last executive session regarding an employment matter. May I have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing employment matter? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. We will then enter executive session for approximately 15 minutes. Invited to this discussions is our legal counsel. If everyone else will please step out and turn off recording devices, we will notify you when we are ready to enter open session again. Back in open session at 6.51. Um, no action will be taken related to labor relations. We'll now be taking action from the executive session related to an employment matter. And so I would like to make a motion for the board to accept the letter of retirement from Tom Petraska submitted April 29th, 2024, contingent on uh, the terms and timelines of separation to be agreed upon by the chair of the board uh, with Tom. Um, um, Second that. Uh, sorry, I'll second it. <laughs> I was getting ready to. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I just want to say thank you, Tom, for all your work. Yeah. Before I was a commissioner and, you know, just keeping the lights on all these years. And, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, since my experience sitting on this board with you, it's, it's been mostly positive. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you for you. everything that you did yeah. to, uh, to keep us, you yeah. know, this company going. Yeah. Yeah. Still got a ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so there's just uh, Yeah, so I guess uh, now I would, um, I would also move that the Board of Commissioners proceed with recruitment efforts for an interim department manager. Um, I don't think we know exactly how long range yeah, you know, maybe a period ranging from 12 to 24 months and uh, authorize Gene Strong to develop a job description and take steps to post for and recruit candidates for this position. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll now move to the next agenda item, operations and safety audit discussions. And Gina Logan. Yes, yeah, so I think um, yeah, I would speak for myself and yeah. say that as a new member of this board, uh, I am really interested in just gathering as much information as possible about uh, the department. Um, you know, especially knowing that there's some change overcoming. Um, and I think it would be really helpful for, you know, the future interim or, you know, longer term department manager to have more of this information too. Um, you know, from an operations perspective, a fiscal perspective, policy, safety perspective, all the protocols that we have in place. Um, in my view, safety obviously is the top priority. And uh, we as a board just don't have the exper expertise to be able to assess where we're at right now in this regard. Uh, we had asked Tom to come to the board with recommendations for an experienced and disinterested outside party specializing in uh, utility operations to conduct, conduct an in-depth evaluation of the department's operations regarding safety, policy, procedures, work practices, skill level and competency, worker confidence, system knowledge, and general workplace culture. 
So I've looked at Tom. What have you come back for us with? Well, I went to Napa and asked them for three, looking for three reputable companies. They gave me three. I got in touch with all three of them. Two of them could not come up with a time frame that would be adequate for us. They were too far out. Um, the one that was able to come in soon um, is MMUA, and that is uh, Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association, Mike Willettes. And he brings real good credentials in the fact that he is uh, chairman of the committee that wrote the book, so APPA. So I think we've got a good candidate there for find out what we need to know. Yep. <clears throat> um, I, I agree with Logan. Um, I also like the timeline that he gave us um, so that something could start soon and get over soon. It's not something that's going to drag on forever or who knows when it's going to start. I like the timeline and um, the fact that he's well known um, and it's going to help this board. Uh, we're all new, we don't know um, yeah. a lot of history and what goes on and it will be helpful to the interim person that comes in um, and I just um, I want to make sure that uh, Brett is front and center with this and hopefully agrees to it and and has good input with this plan. And also, I would hope that we could, um, yeah, I'd like to see us move forward, and I think probably make a motion to do that, but uh, I'm hoping that we can send a draft a letter maybe on uh, the chair's approval to the all, all the electrical light department employees so that they know that this is coming, that we expect that this is going to be the timeline, um, and what this, you know, what this guy's supposed to do and what his role will be. Just so that they know ahead of time what's what to expect. Yeah, I suspect it's going to be very informal. Um, he'll be looking at our procedures, looking at the documentation that we have in place, um, letting us know where we're weak, letting us know where we're okay, making suggestions, and that'll all be done in a final wrap up meeting with him. So I think this is a scope of work. If there are other things that we want to <clears throat> flag that should go into a contract, I don't know exactly what his contracting piece was, but you noted like maybe an entrance meeting with Brett, um, maybe an opportunity for employees to submit anonymous uh, feedback to him if they feel like they want to do that, or other things that perhaps have come up. Um, this would be the time for you guys to kind of talk that out so that Tom hears that other considerations can be built into what the contract for work actually says. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, again, like you said, I think it would be important for him to meet with you on arrival and departure, give you a synopsis of what, you know, they have come up with and... And take, and take, and, and take feedback and uh, maybe some orientation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I don't know, Tom, is um, I know the focus is going to be more on the field because that's what, that's what um, MMUA does, but because they noted, you know, policies, procedures, system knowledge, general workplace culture, I'm assuming he'll at least make a stop over on Pond Street. Oh, sure. Um, I just didn't know, you know, in terms of like all employees, I think it goes a little bit further, um, the scope of his review, but I, I don't recall from our interview with him. I, 
I'm guessing it does because it says general workplace culture and system knowledge. And now that we have mm -hmm. other, like, talking to Michael and mm -hmm. understanding where strengths yeah, and weaknesses are there, too. Definitely going to hit on policies and procedures. And, that will and, involve. and, and those are where? At Pond Street? Um, not necessarily. We have nothing. little bits and pieces of policies and procedures. Nothing. I don't know what you have for policies and procedures out of the shop. I don't have. I have very little bits. Little piece of here. This is how you do it this way. This is how you do this. They're, they're not all combined in one spot. Okay. And that'll so be the, good to know. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's the exact when I used to be audited for <coughs> a federal program. Right. You know, like this is what we tell people. Here's the email I've sent them. <laughs> and, you know, so they'll say, okay, that's fine, or this is a policy that needs to be formalized and approved by the board. So, Cause, yeah, yeah. Because I, I just want, if you do have a file or something, um, Brett probably already knows where that is, and vice versa. I just want whatever level electric has, just make sure that everybody knows where those are so when the auditor yeah. comes, mm -hmm. he, yeah. we'll, we want to use this time wisely. <laughs> no, I agree. I, <clears throat> I do have, like I say, little bits and pieces of policies and procedures in tiny little bites, and none of it all in one big most, policy document. Most of our stuff is internal controls. Yeah, we have, a lot, of inter we have a lot of internal We can get them together controls. before yeah. he comes. Right. Or that'll be the job for the interim manager. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, I'll take a motion that we authorize Tom to enter into a contract with MMUA to conduct an in depth evaluated of the electric light department operations regarding safety, policies, procedures, work practices, skill level, competency, worker confidence, system knowledge, general workplace culture beginning in September and to craft a letter to be sent to all employees next week, beginning with the purpose and our support for the evaluation. And just in the contract with MMUA will be signed by Tom and the chair, correct? Okay. That, that's not what the motion says, but if you're amending it, we can okay. do it that way. Yeah, I think it should be signed by both of you. Yeah, so I'll move, I'll Move that motion and with that amendment. Okay. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> motion carries. So, when are they doing this? The timeline that he proposes is in the proposal that I have, says that he'll be here September 3rd to the 7th. Okay, I'm gone two days of it, so. All right. Well, maybe we maybe part of that, what, two days? Thursday right? and Friday. Which is 5th and 6th? 5th and 6th. 5th and 6th. I'm just suggesting then maybe, if, if depending on what his schedule is. 6th is maybe the Friday, 7th. 7th is the Friday, right? So we'll be gone 6th and 7th. 5th uh, and 6th, I'm gone. Thursday, Friday, I'm gone. In the 7th. Right. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so he's only on set that Wednesday. Yeah. Well, he can focus with Brett on the short end of it, the first part of it. Or, or, well, I would hope the focus would be most of the time he's here. I don't know. Maybe he can. Is work it something that we out. could talk Maybe to him and see if he could so make a different come yeah. the following week? Okay. Because I think it's important. Said the seventh, which is a Saturday. That's that, travel. It says the travel, travel, travel day. day. He has travel, travel day. day. Okay. He has travel day on here. He says he's. Yeah, traveling the third and the seventh right. on site the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Right. But yeah, I mean, hopefully he has all the availability and you guys can negotiate okay. the yes. contract. And maybe not, not do these days. Adjust this. And do the next. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you said fifth and sixth, right? Okay. Okay, moving on 14, board retreat. 
This is an idea generating session. Um, earlier today, we were talking about some things. Now I'm forgetting how far back we were in the meet. Oh, tariffs. Um, we were talking about different topics, rate cases, budget. Um, BEPSA said they would be. Um, there, they went up to I think Barton the other night. The night I was talking to Ken, and he said <clears throat> he was giving their board, which was relatively new, an overview of like what is the state of um, I think he said uh, uh, electricity generation and public policy right now in the state. He had a little presentation, um, and he said he'd be happy to present on anything. Uh, Ron has quite a few different topics with his years of experience. He'd be happy to kind of walk you through. Um, and so I, I didn't want to lose track of this because every meeting we talk about that I've been to these two, um, that I, I hear a lot of needs for wanting to get up to speed with an orientation. And so to the extent that you guys feel you're ready to either start picking a couple of topics or at least pick a date and then say, let's be thinking about what we want to hear, who we want to hear from um, so that we can understand the industry. Um, there is a difference between an open meeting and a retreat, you, you can't, in a retreat, go into any item that is the business of the body and begin deliberating the business of the body. But you can learn about board governance, you can learn about um, the PUC, um, and any other topic that we've talked about. Um, <coughs> so, FEPSA roles. What's that? FEPSA roles. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. Yep. What are the different things that FEPSA does and have some of their folks come in and talk about that? Um, so this is really up to you guys and whether you have time, whether this is an October, November thing, if it's a December, January thing, if it's a next month thing, if it's a half day, if it's one hour at a time and just doing ongoing learning. For, so I for some further oh I'm sorry, Sarah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. For some further context, it's pretty routine for all boards to have an onboarding procedure for new members uh, and to do a yearly training and to just, you know, get stay up to speed on governance, on their roles and responsibilities, and get educated on the various topics that, that you have to run across. You know, you're a brand new board. I don't think any of you have gone through an onboarding proceeding or, or process or so. You know, it, it's, it's playing, playing a little bit of catch up with, with the normal type of education and training given to you know, select board members, nonprofit board members, cooperative board members. You know, it's pretty routine to, to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, my flex schedule is much more flexible <laughs> than yours.
overview of the different elements of putting together the budget and where the data comes from. Yeah, and I can. And it's all based on birth accounting. <laughs> we'll learn what that is. Yes. <laughs> I know it will. So, okay. Okay, so September 27th. Yeah. Yep. Oh, actually, wait. Ron, just let me know that he, he's going to be away um, that last week of September, first few days of October. Um, well, then how about Friday, October 4th? I think I can go a week earlier or a week later. Be fine either way. Uh, I can't do the 20th, so, but I can no, do the 4th. The 4th? Okay. Ron, are you back on the, are you back by the 4th or are you? He's probably on mute. You know. I I get back the fifth of October. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't know. I, I, you know there there are other people that can was good. address governance or PC yeah, issues than, than me. Yeah, we could probably do some of the other bits maybe first. Yeah, maybe um, we we'll do a second one. Yeah, we yep. can do it. We can do a follow up. Yeah. Yep. So we'll stick Maybe to September twenty seventh. Yeah, why not? Okay. 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 And we can come up with. Sure, there'll be something else. It sounds like there's lots of topics. Oh, I think. Yeah. yeah. Plenty. Um. So that's agreed upon. Okay. Other business. And um, we're gonna. We can talk about the space because if it's gonna. We should have a good space that's comfortable, and I'll I'll suggest a My couple ideas. places. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Just trying to move on here, time wise. Other business uh, discussions of the drug and alcohol testing, and um, I think with that, I'd like the only ones that are drug and alcohol tested are the linemen, the shop people, right? Drivers. Not the office. Drivers. 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 Okay. I um, suggest we put Brett in charge of, you're the superintendent, I feel as though you should be the one that is setting up the drug and alcohol testing. Um, that's something we had discussed in the meeting, last meeting, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I made arrangements to do that. Yeah, but from my understanding, the email did not go to Brett. Or was not no no the email I sent to the people that administer the program to put him on it okay and it didn't happen well I followed up with it and I haven't heard back from him okay let's follow up with that again okay so you don't need um, to take action. the thing I okay. think the thing the biggest key here is he's actually a driver that has to get drug tested okay so to do a random test yeah he gets notified they have a drug test. Okay, then let's make sure that the emails go to the proper email and not- I'm just talking about the system itself. What, I'm, ta works. what I'm discussing is when you informed him that the drug test was happening, was it sent to your work email? It was an old email. It was an old email that was non-existent since 2020. You need to, if you're going to inform them that they're being drug tested, you have to send it to his work email. That was his old work email. It's yep. just, does it, it's, it never got closed out, did it? It did now. It's, it's deleted. Um, but that poses a problem because, I mean, I don't know how many emails were sent to that email. Three. Three. So he didn't get those emails on the appropriate time. Why all of a sudden is... Why, why, why did it change? Why did you start sending it? It didn't change. I just happened to click on Brett's name and it came up with that old email and I just sent it. Okay. Didn't even know it was going okay. to that. Okay. All right. It so didn't get returned, that it didn't get delivered. So, so it's I thought it was now. okay. So it's, the, it's, the, yeah, just totally it's deleted. The, yeah. So the whole email is deleted now. Um, well, I, what I'm not clear on though is did it already happen though? It sounds like what you were about to ask to have happen, Tom may have already arranged to have happen, but that now we think there might be a problem with that happening. 
I don't know if you can administer your own drug program. Well, that I think that's another issue other yeah. than the one we're talking about. Right. But what, what I'm saying is I think yeah. if Tom previously was trying to transfer the administer the, the responsibility for the notification over to Brett, but... But, but because he's a driver. But now, and, and they haven't done it, so th he could pull the plug on that, yeah. or he could let it go, and it could still be transferred over. It sounds like there's and a clarification. And I'm not sure they'll let that happen, because he's a, on the roster. So that right. may be so why that's they didn't That's maybe why it didn't yeah. happen. Okay. I need to okay. find out more about it. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay, items for the next meeting. Well, let's see. That'll be the end of September, right? Actually, that'll be the 26th, the day before. Yeah, it's the day before mm -hmm. this proposed retreat. Um, so, we, we tariffs? Said, we, did yeah. We a, yeah. Did we have a, any, uh, did we want to follow up on any of that? Or? I'd be glad to talk about any specific <coughs> tariffs you want to talk about. Okay. It's very tough to be generalized around tariffs because they're all very, very Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm keep understanding keep that, 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 that about what you were saying. Yeah. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah, go, that's yeah. Awesome. That might be. That'll be uh, better. Yeah, that'll If we did an overview. Yeah. 27, but that's part of our retreat. Yeah. If, then we'll, we'll know more about yeah, tariffs. Yeah, that'll be better on our next yeah. agenda. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think okay. we have to do that. Yeah, okay. before we put them on an agenda for action, we should know more. Yeah, and I think... By the end of September, we should have the report back from the safety audit. Would you think? Well, I think we'll have that end of that week. Yeah. Okay. So unless so we change that, the date because he's not going to be yeah, here. Yeah, unless we right. But it yeah. shouldn't be that. But that's uh, okay. Anyways, yeah. that could be on the agenda, and then whoever else, Madam Chairman, wants to put on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Anything else? Uh, how about adjournment? Move to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at this.